Now, next time you go to the grocery store, you'll never look at tomatoes or corn or, or uh, grapes the same way after this. Uh, when you go and look at tomatoes on the vine, you'll see something like this. Either it has this swollen part, what we call loosely a knuckle or a joint, versus not having it. And so what, that happen, what happens when you have this knuckle, and this is what you see in wild plants and also the heirloom tomatoes, is that when the fruit is pulled from the plant, it separates right from that knuckle. That's a natural, what we call, abscission zone, a separation zone, because the fruit naturally wants to fall to the ground, rot, and then spread its progeny seed for the next generation. Now, this natural mutation that Dr. Rick found completely eliminates that knuckle and that joint. And so what happens? Now, when you harvest the fruit, you completely separate from the stem. Why is that important? Well, if you're loading these into your bins, you have to manually remove them. You might say, well, why do I have to remove them in the first place? Because as the fruits ripen, especially in the California processing production, they poke the neighboring fruits, and you have post-harvest fruit damage. It's a major problem with processing. And all processing tomatoes, and now many fresh market tomatoes, have this jointless trait, this second mutation. And here's a real summary of, you just go back to the movie I showed you from California, the jointless trait allowed this, and the self-pruning trait mutation allowed this, okay? So we know that these two examples are mutations that nature has provided. Nature has provided thousands of mutations for domestication and for breeders to be using in crop improvement. But what I would like to argue, and it's a nice time for us to then sit up here after and perhaps have a discussion, is that nature hasn't given us enough. 